Outspoken Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark has resigned his post. But Clark is an avid Trump supporter and rose to national attention last summer when he spoke at the Republican National Convention. He's known, of course, for his hardline stance on law enforcement and association with the NRA. No specific reason given yet for the resignation, but the move comes after reported talks about him taking a senior post at the Homeland Security Department. Right after resigning, Trump just gave Sheriff David Clark the best job of his life. Just hours ago, it was announced that Sheriff David Clark was resigning from his job in Milwaukee County, but nobody knew why. Well, now we do. Thanks to two anonymous sources talking to Politico, the new rumor is that President Trump is expected to name Sheriff Clark to a major position in the White House. Wow, that would be a huge job even if he is not the new Secretary of Homeland Security. There are plenty of major jobs for a tough cop like Sheriff David Clark. Sheriff Clark, uh, President Trump is a builder. This wall will get built. It's the behavior that goes on in the swamp, in the Beltway in Washington, D.C. Uh, you're well aware of that, Sean. Look, President Trump has made it abundantly clear he is going to seal the southern border. As you indicated, there are national security issues, there are domestic security issues, there are economic uh, issues when illegal aliens come into the country. It depresses wages and takes jobs from Americans. And there are also public health issues. Look, the Congress has been the, uh, the hurdle here. And it isn't just the Democrats, but this has been the Senate. You know, the House has passed something. But this game has been going on since... 1980. President Trump is a builder and he knows how to finish a project. This wall will get built. Here's a... Absolutely. Very, very strong personality, too. Very strong. When asked directly about the new job, Clark simply responded, I'll talk about my future plans next week. The rumor from the two sources is that Trump is going to give Clark a position that will not need Senate confirmation. To be fair, those Senate things can take months with the obstructionist Democrats. This will also be the second time Trump has offered Sheriff Clark a job. Back in June, Clark was offered a position in the Department of Homeland Security. However, at the last minute, Clark turned it down. Looks like he finally changed his mind. Let's help give Sheriff Clark the warm welcome he deserves by sharing this everywhere as soon as possible. Uh, very, very, very nice man. Very nice man. Powerful. Straight to the point. He doesn't beat around the bush. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching. Do you think it is fair to link this murder to the Black Lives Matter movement when we still don't know the suspect's motive? I think it's very fair in light of the anti-cop rhetoric that, has, that is sweeping the United States of America, fueled by this group, some of the vulgar, vile, vicious rhetoric that's coming out, talking about killing cops, and that's just some of the nice stuff, some of the stuff I can't even say uh, here on TV. but. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that the two New York officers, uh, Ramos and, and, and Lou, who were gunned down by an individual who made Facebook uh, uh, postings about wanting to kill pigs, and he was going to go out and hunt officers down. There have been officers across the United States who've had their cruisers shot at and struck while they patrolled St. Louis, the same thing. Yes, this is part of a pattern now, and you'd have to stick your head in the sand to think that this thing here wasn't fueled by this vile, vulgar, slimy movement. Mark? Um, well, I disagree with your characterization of BLM, but I, I would, I'd be curious to ask you, do you think that every cop who's been killed this year is connected somehow, the death is connected to BLM? No, but there's an increase in assaults on police officers, the killings of police officers that may not be directly related to this movement, but you know what, there's no fear anymore about assaulting or attacking, fighting, disarming, or, yeah. or generally, uh, like I said, assaulting law enforcement officers. And you know what? If the shoe fits, wear it. Just like the uh, Dylan Roof, right, who went into a church and slaughtered nine churchgoers and every white person in America by this Black Lies movement, L-I-E-S, was, was indicted because of that. And other people came yeah. out and talked about 
discrim slavery, discrimination, live and well in the United States. Well, here's well that's why I said if the shoe fits here, wear it. Right. I, I'm glad that you're saying if the shoe fits, because as a police officer, I would hope you would want to emphasize things like probable cause, do suspicion, investigation. The the police officials. Darren Wilson let me, let me, didn't let me, get that hold mark. On, hold on, let me finish. You know let me that. Let me the officers in the Freddie Gray case uh, sheriff, did not sheriff, get sheriff, that sheriff, sheriff. assumption of innocence. Sheriff. So for you to stand sheriff, up and, and throw that sheriff, out now is it's it's. Sheriff, it's, I haven't it's, said it's, all right, I'll let you finish. It's hypocritical. All right. Okay. It's hypocritical. You've the police you've, officers right. in the Freddie Gray case didn't get that presumption of innocence. All right, I've let you speak the entire time. Just let me respond. didn't get that presumption of innocence. Please, please, please let me respond. By law, we're entitled to a presumption of innocence. Even if you think that those people didn't get what they deserved, as a police officer, I hope you wouldn't say, well, two wrongs make a right. If anything, we should be emphasizing due process and investigation here. And in this case, the people handling the case in Texas themselves have said very clearly, we don't know the motive. So you're essentially saying that your colleagues in law enforcement who say we don't know the motive are wrong and that you yep. do know the motive. The second piece I want to say is that that your characterization of Black Lives Matter is absolutely incorrect. The argument of Black Lives Matter is not to say that police officers should be killed, that police officers should be demonized, that police officers should be marginalized. The argument of Black Lives Matter is that police officers should be held to standards of accountability just like everybody else. And the increased number of black bodies or the sustained number of black bodies which die at the hands of state violence needs to end. It means that while we regard all lives, we what cannot about, exclude black what lives. About what about the black victims that die at the hands of other black people? That doesn't seem to matter. And they're dying doesn't by the thousands, not by the few rare instances of the police use of force. Me, there were 24 unarmed African-Americans killed by police this year. That's according to the Washington Post. So when you take that into account, Sheriff Clark, do you think that African-Americans, people part of this protest, have a right to have their voices heard and to protest? It's not a matter of whether they have a right. It's whether it's a matter of whether it's legitimate. There are 104 homicides in the city of Milwaukee right now. I think there were 79 last year. Baltimore, 214. They've already matched all of of 2014. So when you want to take that 24, I'm not saying that uh, that none of that is legitimate in terms of taking a look at them. But how many of them were ruled justifiable? How many of the the, the uh, uh, uses of force? were determined to be reasonable and justifiable. And then let's compare that 24 to the number of stops made by police officers during that time period. And you'll find that that is a very, very fractional percentage yeah, of, of deaths I, that occur at the hands of police I, I, officers. Been... That's what the data shows anyway. Sheriff David Clark of the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office, and Julie Riginski, Democratic strategist and a Fox News contributor. Great to see you both. Good to see you, Megan. I love when Sheriff wears his hat. <laughs> uh, Sheriff, your thoughts on the president's comments? Well, you know, Barack Obama for seven plus years has played the race card that every time somebody criticized him, it was because he was black and it scared off a lot of Republicans. So now they're going to switch and try to play the gender card. The problem is the American uh, public is tired of this class warfare. The reason why they don't like Mrs. Bill Clinton is not because she's a woman. It's because she's dishonest and because she is hiding something. She's hiding the truth. She tries to play off. She tries to play herself off as a victim like she's Little Red Riding Hood, but she's more like the big bad wolf. As soon as you turn your back on you, she'll bite you. Now, look, this is politics. It's a contact sport. It's not for the faint of heart. My response to what uh, President Obama said is if she can't stand the heat, she should get out of the kitchen. Julie? Well, first and foremost, I think you just proved my point, Sheriff. And, you know, you and I were not numbered last week, and I love you, but she's not Mrs. Bill Clinton. She happens to be Hillary Rodham Clinton, who is her own person and is running as her own individual. She's a former senator. She's a secretary of state. She's not Mrs. Bill Clinton. And I think you just encapsulated exactly why a lot of women think that it's she's not, not my getting job a fair. to give you her bio. It's not her bio, but it's also not your job to assume that she's just a little woman who's married to she Mr. She has Bill, run with that name Mr. for a long Mr. time. Mr. Well, she's run for that name because she happens to be married to the former president, but she's certainly not Mrs. Right. Bill Clinton. She should embrace it. Uh, well, no, she shouldn't embrace it. She should embrace the fact that she's a very accomplished lawyer in her own right, a very accomplished woman in her let own right. Let me ask you this, Julie, let, let me ask you this. Do you think there's something to the notion that um, 
there, that's, that um, many Americans find the idea of, of a female president somehow threatening. Do you think there's anything to that? You know, I, I, unfortunately I do, and it's a shame because I think, but you have polling showing, uh, poll after poll showing, you have Anna uh, Greenberg, who is a very prominent pollster, saying that her numbers went up when she focused specifically on women's issues, whether it's standing by her man when she was, secre when she was first lady um, after the Monica Lewinsky scandal or working on women's, traditional women's issues or even working as Secretary of State for Barack Obama, who's a man, but her numbers are not so great when she's running for something, when she's working in health care reform, when she's become a principal and taken on roles that are traditionally men's roles. And I think, unfortunately, I hate to say this because as a woman who is living in the 21st century, I would hope this is not the case, but empirical data shows, unfortunately, that it is the case. Mm -hmm. You know, Sheriff, I remember uh, eight years ago, when uh, Sarah Palin was on the Republican ticket, they were doing full articles about how she was going to balance her her situation of having, I think, five kids and being vice president. It was just like, basically, for lack of a better Megan, term, screw you for writing that, right? Because nobody was wondering how Barack Megan, Obama Megan, was going to balance having words. two kids. Yep. So it's, right, it's, Megan, it's still you took there the words to some out of my, my mouth Go ahead. when you mentioned uh, Sarah Palin, because the way the Democrats treated Sarah Palin was nothing short of shameful. Also, the way they treated Condoleezza Rice when she was the Secretary of State, they did the same thing. So all of a sudden, when it's one of those women who gets close to the White House, then it's okay to trash them. But when it's one of their women, then they try to play the victim card. America's mm. tired of that stuff right now. She should stand on her own two feet. Take the heat. Look, this is for the presidency of the United States. Nobody's going to feel sorry for her. Right. Nobody's going to back down. I'm glad Donald Trump's not handling her with kid gloves. Right. Julie, that is true that there was a, Sarah Palin endured a lot of sexism when she was running. And the, the women's groups, I mean, the silence was deafening. They were not there for her, you tell me, because she is a Republican. No question. And I agree with you 100 percent. Sarah Palin got the short shrift in many ways. So you understand why Republicans uh, are like, boo-hoo, we're no, not no, listening no. to your complaints now. Where were you when one well, of ours was being attacked? First and foremost, some of us were there for Sarah Palin, not specifically on her policies towards women well, or things two. that we help women. But, <laughs> but, some, but some of us did feel that Sarah Palin got incredibly short shrift, especially when you said what people were saying, how is she going to balance having children and she had a newborn. And put her who, on the cover, I think it was a, of Newsweek, in yep. a, in a, in a no. photo shoot she did for a biking magazine. Yep. But, but listen, I'm not sure if she should Pose for that necessarily for that picture, but oh, come on. But having said that, look, I mean, uh, there's no question that if you went to the Republican convention, as all of us did, and you saw some of the buttons being handed out, and you saw some of the uh, things that were said about her, she was called the B word, she was called mm -hmm. the C word, she was called all sorts of names that I, I've never heard mm -hmm. a man being called, and you can't say that's anything other than sexism, unfortunately. All right, I gotta leave it at that. Give you the last word. Great to see you both. Great to see you.